Drums are one of the most important instruments in a band because they lay out the foundation of each song. Every band member must rely on the drummer so everyone else can stay in sync. Bobby Gillespie, a band member in Primal Scream, and Jesus and Mary Chain is famous for his quote, A band is only as good as its drummer, which I found in the article In Defense of the Rock Drummer on PopMatters.com. It was written by Colin McGuire and last updated on April 22nd, 2013. His quote is everywhere, and he is not wrong. Over the past 12 years, I've learned a lot about how to play metal drums. It takes a lot of speed, endurance, coordination, and focus to play. We all have our own types of music, whether it's country, pop, rap, rock, or even metal. But it wouldn't be possible without a beat. And these beats are created by drummers. If you like music, you should respect the beat and the drummer, but not everybody has to respect the bass player. We all know how they do things. <laughs> In this video, I'm going to talk about the layout of metal drums, what they're made out of, and some examples on how they're played. Let's start out with the layout of metal drums. Now, let's start with the biggest drum first. This is called the bass drum, or the kick drum, whatever you prefer. The bass drum is played by using a drum pedal. In metal music, most drummers have a double bass pedal, which allows you to play the bass with both feet instead of just one. Now, I've been practicing double bass for eight years, and I can tell you, it takes a lot of endurance and coordination to have both hands and feet playing at different rhythms and timings. Our second most important instrument is called the snare drum. The snare drum gives off a loud pitch whack. It sounds like this because there's tight wires that are underneath the drum. The snare drum is usually located right between your right leg and your left leg. It's usually the closest drum that's to you. Let's get into our toms next. A typical drum set usually has three toms. A high tom, a mid tom, and a low tom. These drums do not have any wires on the bottom of them like the snare drum does. The higher tom always has a shorter diameter than the lower tom. This is causing it to be more high pitched. The smaller the diameter of the drum, the higher pitched sound, while the larger diameter drum gives off a lower pitched sound. These are all played by drumsticks, including the snare drum. Now, you're probably thinking, what are those big metal circle thingies that people hit? Well, those, my friends, are called cymbals. It's practically a big convex metal shaped disc that is hit with sticks. Cymbals give off the clashing sound and it cuts through all the other drums. Ride cymbals usually are the biggest and they're placed on the right side of the drum kit, right above the floor toms. It gives off a higher pitch ting. Next we have our crash cymbals. These are usually smaller than the ride cymbal and they give off a sound more like a psh. In metal drums, there are a lot more than just one crash cymbal. Now, you may be thinking, if I had more than one, wouldn't they all sound the same? Well, they wouldn't sound the same because they come in different sizes. And, like I said before, the smaller the diameter, the higher pitch sound. According to Donson's in the Beginning Guide to Cymbals, that was published on April 27th, 2013, cymbals that are in the 6 to 13 inch range are called splash cymbals. Splash cymbals are just a smaller crash cymbal, and they have a higher pitch sound. Simple as that. So, what are these drums and cymbals made of? Well, there's many types of materials that make of drum shells. Most of them are from wood. I'm going to talk a little bit about the more popular kinds and what they sound like. According to the article in ModernDrummer.com by Fran Azarto in the September and October 2011 issue of Drum Business, Companies use woods like maple, birch, mahogany, walnut, oak, and babinga. I could keep listing more, but there are a lot. And these are just more of the popular ones. The article states that maple is an all-purpose wood. It's good for high pitches and low pitches. Birch is loud and cutting. Mahogany is vibrant and resonant. Walnut is big and warm. And oak is all-purpose with a quick decay. Um, our last one, Babinga, is sensitive and punchy. All pictures are from Creative Commons. My kit is a birch, and I think it sounds amazing. Uh, cymbals are mostly made out of copper and tin. Uh, cymbals can get super technical and confusing with all the different types of sounds and what's in them, uh, but generally they're just from copper and tin. 
in their different amounts. Just because I'm describing a typical metal drum set, that doesn't mean that you can't play jazz or hip-hop, country, or rap, or whatever. Um, you can play any style of music with any set of drums. You don't have to have a giant kit to play metal music. I've seen plenty of metal bands that have a small and crappy kit. If you're thinking about playing drums, just look online and grab a used kit. Every kit that I've bought has been used. I'm now going to show you what metal drums sound like on my electric drum set. You will be able to hear the fast double bass and aggressiveness in these examples. I'm going to be playing Bells and Whistles by Necrogoblicon from the album Power that was produced by themselves and released in 2013. I'll also be playing Ready for the Ride by Avatar from the album Black Waltz that was produced by Entertainment One Music and released in 2012. of metal drums, we talked about what each drum was called with, along with the layout, uh, how they sound, and what they're made out of. Drums are super fun to play because not everybody can play them. It's fun to be different like that. I hope this video gave you an insight of what drums are like, and maybe you can even grab a pair of sticks and go out and drum yourself.